beautiful people of the world. reaction videos so today is vlogmas day one and so i want to start out with something i haven't done in a while which is reaction video i'm not sure if reaction videos will count as a um vlog but it's still vlogmas and i'm trying to be on my grind this december try my best to stay consistent so i hope you guys are doing well what we're gonna be reacting to today if my laptop worked, boy asked his classmate to kill his mother so he can stay out late. That's the title of the video. This is from the channel, and I and I, and if y'all know me, y'all know I love true crime. Like this is something different. I don't even think I react to anything like with true crime on my channel before. I got my pizza here because we just got pizza and I wanted to eat. So if I eat. Yeah, I know why. Just have something to snack on. It don't even matter what you got. Just have something. So we're gonna hop into this video. I don't know if I'm gonna be stopping here and there. I probably will. Do you want darker stories? Do you want to dive into creepier videos? Well, my little detectives, it's time we go even deeper. This is Anna Uncovered. Check out the link below to find out more. Parents who had a hard start in life usually want better for their kids and always push them to work hard and make the best of every opportunity presented to them. But when you're raised in that kind of environment, sometimes encouragement can feel overbearing. That was the case for Danish Menhas, the son of a woman who came to the States to give her kids a better life by pushing them to be the best. On the outside, Danish was a perfect student with a bright future ahead, but behind closed doors, he was plotting something truly evil. Let's dive in. After divorcing her husband, Tabassum Khan moved from Pakistan to Houston, Texas with her children to start a better life. She worked super hard and even though they didn't have as much as other families, Tabassum always tried to give her kids everything they wanted. At 43 years old, all of her kids except one had moved out and gone on to start their own lives. Her remaining son was Dinesh, who was 17 and his mom's pride and joy. From the outside looking in, you could totally see why. Dinesh was a straight A student who was loved by his teachers and his classmates. On top of that, he was class president and the principal student helper. He was smart, ambitious, and always took care of his appearance. He had a bright future ahead of him. While his mom was happy to give him his own car, credit card, and whatever else he needed, it came with a price. Bassin had high expectations of all her children, and all the privileges she granted them came with a strict list of rules, which limited how often Dinesh got to see his friends outside of school. This made him bitter. But what nobody realized was just how mad these rules made Dinesh and how his anger manifested into dark thoughts behind his cool, charming persona. November 24th, 2009, the police received a harrowing call from Dinesh. He'd come, come home, home to find his mom. This is a whole freaking ad that just popped up, but I'm gonna take this time to talk real quick. I feel like it always happens that way. Like with it doesn't always happen that way. Like, it's always the perfect child, the perfect, the perfect everything that winds up, you know, doing something bad. Like, I've heard a lot, like, recently I've been hearing a lot of stories like that. I always see stories like that when it's, like, the perfect, like, they got everything they need. Like, they got this, they got that. But, like, you know, some people just aren't happy with that, so. Find his mom dead in their living room, covered in blood. There were obvious signs of a struggle. Tabassum was covered in defensive injuries and there were clear signs of an attempted burglary. Also, the person that did this covered her face with a blanket after she'd passed away, which is usually a sign of shame or guilt. The police thought they had a decent chance of catching the person who did this, as they'd carelessly left bloody fingerprints all over the apartment. As well as that, they later discovered a blood sample they took from the scene that didn't belong to Tabassum and likely belonged to her killer. However, when they tested it, it didn't come back with a match to 
anyone in their system. The same for the fingerprints. So while they had a great set of forensic evidence, they had nobody to tie it to. What they did know was that more than likely, Tabasum knew the person who took her life. This was because there were no signs of breaking and entering. So she either let the culprit inside or they had a key. With this in mind, they turned their attention to the person who discovered her, Dinesh. He claimed that that night he was in Galveston and at the movies with a girl, and he was out with her until after 4 a.m. This immediately struck the investigators as suspicious. The day Dinesh claimed to be at the movies was a Tuesday, a school night. His mom made him come home by 8 p.m. every day, and he wasn't allowed to drive on the freeway. How come all of that suddenly changed on the same night she died? Plus, two other details pointed to Dinesh's guilt. During the call to the police, he said multiple times that he checked to see if his mom was alive, as in feeling for her pulse, right? Well, the police noted that there wasn't a single drop of blood on Dinesh or his clothes. Now, you'd think that this is a sign that he wasn't involved, because if he committed the crime, then he would have blood on him. But that isn't how the detectives saw it. Dinesh Mihas is the type of person that truly believes that he is the smartest person in the room, and that he has seen enough crime scene shows about blood evidence that if he didn't have any on him, he certainly wouldn't be a suspect. And then there was that call to the police. See if you can figure out what's wrong in this snippet of the call. You don't know what happened? Did you get it? For those of you wondering, it's all to do with Dinesh giving his alibi almost literally to the first person who will listen. The killer is actually the one calling 911. They will try to lay out their alibi. Despite their suspicions, they couldn't tie Dinesh to the crime scene, as neither the blood sample nor the fingerprints were a match for him. During an interrogation down at the station, detectives were more certain than ever that Dinesh was responsible. But how? He had all the hallmarks of a guilty suspect, but they couldn't link him to the crime itself. And then they arrested Noram Nor Muhammad. According to reports, Noor had a long history of encounters with the law, despite being in some of the same classes as Dinesh and only being a year older than him. The police turned up at the school shortly after Tabassum died to arrest Noor on a totally different charge. But his behavior as he was being taken away gave them major red flags. As he was being laid away, he called back to some of his classmates watching on. Tell Dinesh... I just want to say this real quick. This is for educational purpose only. I'm not saying this is how you get away with it. I'm not trying to tell anybody how to get away with murder. But all I'm saying is, if you knew you did something bad, you would think to be careful. Because he got arrested on a different charge. You would think he would try to stay away from the law. But okay, I'm not even gonna. Dinesh, tell Dinesh, tell Dinesh, give me a call. Tell Dinesh, I'm going to jail. The detectives didn't forget his words, and when they got to the station, especially after they noticed a strange cut on his hand, they took a sample of his blood, and just as they suspected, it was a match to the other blood found at the crime scene. Nor confessed to the crime almost immediately, but Dinesh was by no means innocent because he paid Nor to do it. Nor told detectives that Dinesh paid $5,000 for Five taking out his mom dollars. and paid him $1,000 to show he was serious. He told Nora he'd find the rest of the money in a white envelope at the apartment, which is why the crime scene looked like an attempted robbery. After seeing that Nora was injured in the struggle, Dinesh promised to double his fee. Of course, when he was presented with this info, Dinesh denied everything, but he changed his original story. He now claimed that Nora tried just to rob both him and his mom I'm and make Dinesh watch him take her life. The cops didn't buy that version of events either, especially after discovering they weren't the first people Nora had confessed to. It turned out that Nora had apparently been struggling with all these stupid ads y'all I'm sorry we don't got time for these ads come on now with what he'd done and he confessed to multiple people at school about it for some reason no one took this info to the authorities and not even teachers had heard it as a rumor Dinesh eventually confessed to the role in his mom's murder both he and Nora pleaded guilty to their crimes Nora was sentenced to 40 years behind bars and Dinesh to 50 but that isn't where the story ends. In 2017, eight years after this all happened, Dinesh agreed to give his first interview. Maybe in the hopes of making people sympathize with him? Well, it didn't work because he just came out with more lies. In his latest version of events, Dinesh claims he told Nora that they were going to stage a robbery so Dinesh could come home and save his mom, who would hopefully give him more freedom for him coming to her rescue. He says that Nora went off script and that's what led to the tragedy. I don't think I understood the consequences of if you do this and things are supposed to go according to plan, Murphy 
Murphy's Law comes into play. Murphy's Law is a philosophical phrase that states, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. People usually say it as a way to encourage others to prepare for the worst outcome. So, even though he acknowledges he's at least partially responsible for what happened, Dinesh is still trying to make people believe that it was an accident and that he's actually a good guy. To be honest, I don't think I was a bad person to get in the letter of the law committed a crime, but I don't have a criminal mindset. I don't believe that. Dinesh won't be up for parole until 2035, at which point he'll be 43, the same age his mom was when she died. The detectives wow. in the case doubt he will ever make parole because he still thinks he's smart enough to convince people he isn't a killer. Now everyone knows better than to believe a single thing he says. That brings us to the end of today's video. What do you think of this case? Be sure Anyway, y'all. Uh, that's the end of the video. Um, oh no. Me personally, I feel like that's like, that shows no remorse. The fact that you are trying to still put it on someone else. He probably didn't have the murder weapon in his hand. He probably didn't actually physically you know kill i don't youtube don't 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 strike me but you know his mother his mother but he's the one that set it up and now he's trying to convince people that oh it was supposed to be this if that happened like your your mom already knows that you're a good you're a good kid right supposedly was a good kid so the fact that you will come to our rescue i feel like that would make her want to want you to stay like with her more to, for like her protection because like if she's about to get robbed or whatever is about to happen like i would be scared to be home alone that's just me but who knows but i just feel like everything he's saying is bs and obviously he, i don't feel like he's remorseful your mom probably just wanted you to be home safe wanted this wanted that obviously you can't get everything and then like expect her like you know what i mean like she's a caring mother and she cares about you from what i get from the story she was a caring mother and she cared about her son she cared she probably cared about her son's safety where he was at do not come home later than 8 p.m like parents tell you these things for a reason if you're if they're saying you can't no you can't go to that party they don't feel comfortable with you going to that party they're worried about your safety and they're not doing it saying oh you gotta be home by this time they're not doing it, most parents aren't doing it to be hateful or any of that. They want, they care about you, they want you to be safe, they want you to do this, do that. They want you to have a good head on your shoulders. They want you to get far in life. Most parents. Some parents, I, the other parents I can't speak for. There, there are abusive parents out there. Most parents, like, they just want their children to do good in life and they just want to see them succeed and they're not trying to be hateful towards you if you get what i mean at the end of the day i don't think he's remorseful the other guy i don't know kids being stupid like you're not a good guy stop believing you are stop blaming on other people actually take accountability for your actions hope y'all enjoyed this video make sure to like comment share and subscribe you're turn on your post notifications so you get an alert every time i upload a video make sure to stay you stay true be you to the fullest because baby girl you're bad and don't let nobody tell you different y'all have a blessed one bye